Hello everybody, in this video I'll demonstrate why you probably should not rely on Windows security questions and especially store anything sensitive in there. As the thumbnail suggests, I don't like clickbait, they're actually stored in plain text and I'm not kidding. Now what the hell is this? Oops, you've lost your connection. Um, you see I'm connected to the network but it doesn't allow me through. Huh. Very interesting, That never seen that happen in the obby. Anyway, that's probably um, a certificate issue. Maybe um, we should check out the date and time. Oh yeah, it's not April tonight. <laughs> it's actually uh, October 2024, so I'll we'll just go ahead and restart. It's probably gonna fix the issue. Not looking good for Microsoft. Now, there could be a debate about whether the security questions are secure at all. Should you use security questions? Turns out it's a bad idea. Knowledgeable people advise against using security questions, and I can understand that. Uh, you're essentially defeating the purpose of a password by creating a couple more less secure passwords in the making that you have to remember or write down anyway. Um, a couple more passwords. Passwords. Now you see, the answers to the security questions are just as personal and important as passwords most of the time when they're enabled and therefore should also be hashed. However, Microsoft decided to store them in plain text because why the hell not? Nobody's going to notice that anyway. It's not that big of a deal. Nobody's interested in security forensics, right? Right? But even if they did decide to hash answers to these security questions, it wouldn't matter because the entire NTLM hashing mechanism is dated garbage anyway. So who cares? Quite a convenient approach to security, I would say. The only right way to solve that would be to upgrade the NTLM authentication system to use secure cryptographic algorithms. Microsoft gave up instead. But that's a topic for another video. In the meantime, we got a, an update from Windows 11. Come on, man, what the hell? Come on, dude, get that garbage out of here. Oh, wait. Did you know you can select the text here? Sit back and relax while the magic happens. No, thank you. Can I... Can I please get my command prompt up and running? Oh my god, thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do... Real quick... Disable the network so it doesn't download any updates. Oh my god. At least Microsoft won't get to nag me about the Microsoft account. Okay, much better. Wait. What? Welcome? Oh, no, wait. I think it's, um, it's a placeholder. Yeah, right. Speed run through the obby. Come on. Come on. Load. Please load. Skip. I don't have internet. I don't want you to have internet. No, I want limited setup. Please let me through that. All right, so let's do my name right here. Enter the first password, which is gonna be 9988. No secrets here. I can't even, what? Why is Obi breaking all of a sudden? Well, it's 9988. You gotta trust me here. Confirm the password. Oh, I can show it to you now. There you go. All right. And now we got optional security questions. Just in case you forget your password, choose three security questions. Make sure your answers are unforgettable. So what kind of answers are unforgettable? Select the name of the city where my parents met. Let it be Tokyo. Go. What was your childhood nickname? Obviously Enderman. Um, what's the name of my oldest cousin? Let it be Ashley. All right, we've set up our security questions. Now we get to have our data stolen by Microsoft. Advertising ID, please turn off, accept. Because there is no option to decline. And hi, bye. We need task manager. And we need explorer. Okay, much better. And keep in mind, these answers 
are pretty secret information, only I should know, because it's going to grant anyone access to my account. So we can sign out. And then, get the password wrong, then reset it using the security questions. They're all here. They're not even centered. Oh my god. What's happening? Why is it lagging? Ashley? Alright. And we get to choose a new password. Okay, now that we're inside Windows, let's go ahead and see what we just put into the boxes in plain text. Um, it's stored in the registry. So we need the registry editor for that. There is a hive under HKey local machine called SAM. SAM stands for Security Account Manager. And uh, we can't really access that. We need system rights for that. Uh, because SAM can only be accessed with local system rights. That's not a big deal because some Windows services run under local system and they have access to that area. So what we can do, we can use Process Hacker or PSExec to elevate our permissions. And I prefer Process Hacker for that, so let me just drop it in real quick. Never mind, it doesn't have a VMware tools installed. All right, we're good to go. Let's run Process Hacker now. Gotta run it as an administrator to then elevate to Trusted Installer. We actually don't need Trusted Installer rights for that, but why not have them? when we can running the registry editor as a trusted installer we get access to sam right here so the sub key we're looking for is domains account users and a little hex number right here as you can see we have five hex numbers we have five keys under users so we have five users and only one of them is real the rest are virtual and it's easy to understand once you realize these are relative IDs. You could compare the relative IDs to user IDs in Linux and in this case 3 9 is 1001 and that's my user Andrew. We can quickly confirm it's in fact 1001 if we put it into the calculator. There we go, nice and easy, 1001. So the first user in the system usually has an ID of 1001 or 3E9. While keys below 1000 usually contain information about virtual service accounts. And we have access to them too. The values inside the key are all pretty important. For example, the value F contains the logon information. It's stored in binary. It's a binary structure. As well as V, which uh, contains everything up to the encrypted password hash. It's somewhere at the end here. Somewhere right here is the password. Supplemental credentials is also a binary structure, but I think it has something to do with Active Directory. It used to be somewhere else, but then they moved it here. The rest of the values should have been called intuitively, I think, at least for example, force password reset. And it's pretty self-explanatory. If you set it to one, it's gonna ask you to reset the password next logon. And reset data, that's what we're looking for. In fact, these are our security questions. <laughs> Would you look at that? They're stored in plain text JSON, just as I told you. You can probably kind of skim through it and see all the data we've put in earlier, but it's little engine UTF-16, so it's rough on the eyes. And I also want to show off my script, so let's go ahead and export the SAM key as a reg file. So for that, we gotta click on SAM right here, and File, Export, and let's export it to a desktop, sure. SAM.reg. Oh yes, we're running as a system, so it's not the desktop I think it is. It's a system profile desktop, so let's go ahead and pick User Sandrew Desktop. There you go, SAM.reg. Beautiful. Okay, so here's the script I wrote to pretty much crack Windows passwords. We'll extract the security questions using this guy. I mean, the code is pretty bad, but I guess it works. I tested it, it does. Am I gonna get banned just for saying this? <laughs> 
I don't know, I guess I'll put a disclaimer before the video starts. Can't do anything on YouTube nowadays, man. Okay, so we've got the Sam reg file. I just extracted from my Windows Virtual Machine. Put it in parallel to the script. Let's go ahead and run it. Voila! Here's our reset data. Wait, these are our security questions, right? <laughs> What's secure about those security questions, Microsoft? Huh? Look at that. Anyway, let's have a little bit of fun now. The questions are fully customizable, as they're also being read from the very same JSON. As you can see here, the question and the answer. We're only given, what, like six options for the security questions? That's so lame. Let's make our own. Coincidentally, I also have a neat little Python script for that right next to the Sam reader. It's called resetgen.py. And here we basically take a Python dictionary and uh, translate it into a reg file. Very simple. What's your favorite color? Copilot. Goddamn, that's so lame. Let's think of something cooler than that. So the question would be, let me think about it for a moment. What is your favorite song? And my answer to that would be... Oh my god, dude. <laughs> you can make this up, man. I just got recrawled by Copilot. My answer to that would be Fixer by Metallica. My man, the, the riffs are heavenly on this song. What is my favorite video? And my favorite video, <laughs> The Unforgiven. Oh my god, dude. This is why I love Copilot. And my favorite video would be, I think, Hacking Windows 10S. That was really cool. Got to learn so much new stuff back then. What is your favorite animal? And that's right. I love cats, man. I got two kids myself. And they're uh, really cute, so definitely cat. Translated into the reg file, but first we need to enter the account error ID 3E9. And it spewed out the reset the reg. So we now just have to run that. Okay, here we go. We won't have enough rights, even if we run it as an administrator, so let's... Um, Import it using um, the registry ran as trusted installer. My desktop is located at C users Android desktop. You know, reset.reg. Beautiful. So we've updated the registry. We can verify it here. And we got our password wrong. Go ahead and click reset password. There we go. Here are our custom questions for Windows Logon UI. So, my favorite song is Fixer, my favorite video is Hacking Windows 10 S, and my favorite animal is a cat. Beautiful. We now get to reset our password. I'm gonna set the same password, 9988, and get into the system. The natural question now is, how far can we take it? What happens if we add more than three questions, let's say? So let's go ahead and test that real quick. I like pits, so why not? Okay, beautiful. So we have seven questions here. Generated again. 3E9. We have a new reset.reg. And import the file. And unfortunately... Only the first three security questions are being featured on the login screen. So it's not going to use the rest of the questions we've passed. Um, and the, only the first three remain. And I don't actually remember the answers to them. How long can a security question be? And to find out, we're going to generate some funny text using Zalgo. So here's the Zalgo text generator. So 
we can type our text here and it's gonna add a bunch of Unicode characters on top of that. And uh, it's UTF-16, so Unicode is gonna work with the security questions. Let's try something out. Um, there is no escape. A bunch of exclamation points. Turn up the craziness level to the max and copy that. It's such a long line. The answers will be no escape, no escape, and no escape. Okay, the moment of truth. Is it gonna break or is it gonna work? Okay, the logon UI does not crash so far. Let's write the wrong password. Okay, reset password. All right, the security questions just don't work anymore. It now takes us directly to the reset drive screen. Okay, let's see now. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> you can insert Zalgo here too. And it makes sense because it's a UTF-16 encoding. It can accept these characters. So, um, yeah, I guess that's a wasted opportunity with the malware I wrote before. So we can answer no escape, copy paste that. You can't copy paste that. Well, today I learned no escape. So today's lesson, don't ever use when the security questions because they can be easily compromised by any service on your system that has a local system rights. Um, not very cool for Microsoft. Uh, you should hash the security questions just as you hash the passwords. So here's the reset data. Here's our stuff. And yeah, thank you for watching. Take care.